The next biggest thing from Army Painter. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and today I have some of the new Army Painter speed paints on hand to show you what I think of them and how they compare to contrast. So I bugged the crap out of Army Painter for the longest time because I wanted a faster way to paint my Marvel Crisis Protocol figures, and I was like, yo, I know what you're working on. I want it. I want it now. <laughs> That's basically how it went. Um, and I was lucky enough to get uh, a, a good a good chunk of their paints a little ahead of time. These aren't even in a box set yet. They sent me some some randos, some Lucy's, so to speak. And uh, and I've been playing around with them for about a week. I managed to paint up a couple of things, asked a lot of questions, and did a lot of uh, test painting that I'm about to show you all here. And I have to admit that overall, um, I'm super impressed with these paints. And you know, it's not just because, hey, Army Painter sends me stuff all the time, because they do, and you know that. But I don't always like everything they send me, and I don't always talk about everything they send me, because if it doesn't resonate with me, it's not gonna resonate with you guys. So don't worry, just because they send me something, I'm not gonna always talk about it. But that being said, I feel like these paints are probably one of the best things that Army Painter's ever done. Maybe the hobby has ever had product-wise, because it's everything that contrast isn't. It's everything that we wanted from Contrast, but Contrast seemed like it was just kind of shoehorned into its role, and it's very inconsistent across the board. And I've been painting a lot of miniatures with Contrast, my Marvel Crisis Protocols, and I was like, man, this should really work a lot better. Why isn't it working better? And I was like, because it's not exactly what it was supposed to be. And it's, it is a great tool, and it's great for a lot of things, but it's not really great for what it's supposed to be good at. And that's, what I, that's where I feel like Speed Paint comes in and is gonna rock everybody's socks, personally. So um, I'm very fortunate, I'm one of the very first people with these. Um, so I do wanna say thank you to Army Painter, but you know they always send me stuff, but I'm just doing, I'm just going through the motions here, people. So let's talk about the paints themselves. So this is a uh, 18 milliliter bottle. It's the same size as their new air paints and of course their existing uh, war paint set. So it's pretty much across the board. You're not, you're not getting like little value or anything like that. Now what the liquid is, I'm actually not sure, but it's very, very soluble, um, and, which I'm about to show you when I actually use these here in a minute. Um, and it it almost feels, it feels light. Like it feels light, but they're, they're, they, they came to be completely full, but they felt light. So it's really interesting properties. And I don't know enough about what it all is inside of here that uh, to really comment on it. Um, but I do know that it's probably got a lot of water and it does have uh, some additives to it, which they kind of talk about on um, the uh, little warning right here, which is just basically whenever you send stuff across countries, across borders, that customs is going to look at these things and they're going to be like, hey, what is this? And of course, they're going to check the MSDS. It's why all the boxes from Games Workshop, if you ever see the shipping boxes, they always say not children's toys because children's toys are subjected to additional testing, you know, like lead paint and all that because you don't, kids put stuff in their mouth. I'm an adult and I put stuff in my mouth, but whatever. You get what I'm saying. So, this, so I haven't had any, I've gotten this stuff all over me. It comes off pretty easily. Um, I still have some on me, it looks like, <laughs> from earlier. I don't know, it just kind of goes everywhere, so whatever. I didn't, I haven't even used these paints today and I got some on me, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. So as far as, the, you get the same amount as uh, this stuff here. If I had to guess, they are gonna be priced a little bit more than the airbrush and the war, war paints, just because of the material that it is. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit more expensive for whatever the contents are that makes it do what it does. Because if it didn't, then it would just be this, right? So if I had to guess, it's going to be more than the $4 at the normal pots of paint. But if I also had to guess from Army Painter, it's not going to be $8 a bottle either. So I would say I would probably put it right in a happy medium, happy middle uh, price point in there somewhere, which means that knowing what we know already publicly about what comes in the set, that a set of paints is probably gonna be right around a Hondi. So, which is like half price of the other stuff. It's just some price comparisons there to think about. Now, let's talk about the uh, material. So, to use these paints, uh, just, you got two different options. You can prime something white, which they recommend, but remember, when it comes to contrast paints, they were always like, hey, try these different colors. And they had a couple different colors, like, um, 
there was a white, right, and there was a uh, like a really light gray, like almost like a cold gray, like a bluish gray. And then there was a bone color, which I didn't grab my bone airbrush paint. So I was kind of playing around with uh, pre-priming stuff at different, uh, those different colors to see if there was any real difference to them. And there kind of wasn't, and I, I feel like, yeah, you know, maybe that's just too much and it was just a way for Games Workshop to sell like a $30 can of paint or whatever it was because it worked with contrast. I don't feel like you need to do that because this right here, which I've already painted a bunch of stuff, is just the normal Army Painter White, which is, it used to be like 10 bucks, but I imagine nowadays it's 12 or 15 dollars. I actually don't know what it goes for, but stuff goes up and you know, 10 years ago it was 10 bucks. I imagine it's a little bit more, but it's probably not 20 dollars if I had to guess. So just straight up prime your stuff white if you really want to. or. And I'm not gonna super get into this technique, but there's another technique out there where you can just dry brush your, after you prime them black, it's kind of like what I do with my Marvel Crisis Protocol figures, where I just literally either airbrush or uh, gently uh, dry brush the models very heavily, and you wanna go back and make sure you hit all the edges and stuff, because you gotta get all, all that detail and all the, the very much uh, edge work there. and you can just set it up like this and then just go to town. If you want to add extra steps, there's extra steps to create a little bit more depth where you can seal it up and then do something like uh, some black wash. Um, but it's going to take a lot more time because you have to matte coat every step, like prime it, dry brush it, matte coat it, wash it, matte coat it. So now you're already, already a couple days down the road on a project, which is great for Mobile Crisis Protocol because I got like 80 of these figures. So I can just paint up a team at a time, have a team prepped, ready to go, to start painting a new team. But if you're just like, yo, I just want to paint some stuff, hit it with some white primer and go to town. It literally could not be easier. I mean, I guess the figures could paint themselves to use these speed paints. So just put, I like using little water, uh, water bottle caps for palettes because you don't have to mess around with a wet palette. You don't have to worry about any other craziness. I also really like using a natural hair brush. Um, Army Painter has a lot of great brushes, but I don't think they're natural hair. I like using natural hair brushes, not synthetics with my washes because it holds a lot more liquid. But you can use wedge brushes. Those tend to hold a little bit more in the synthetic and those work great. But remember that if you don't seal your miniatures, you run the risk of, of kind of tearing into the paint, but you, and you also definitely run the risk with a wedge brush of really getting in there and kind of chiseling stuff away that you didn't matte coat down. So just keep, kind of keep that in mind. Anyways, you squirt a little bit of speed paint out. It's super easy. Um, you can have another one just to kind of dab your, your brush out on right here. If it's got a little too much in it, maybe, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Let's paint this one right here in the middle. And then you just go to town. Actually, I took too much off. You actually want to leave a bunch on here. You just go to town. You literally coat it from top to bottom as best you can. Um, one thorough coat of this paint. And as you can see, it's already doing all the work. You don't have to thin it. You don't have to push it around. You don't have to really do anything but just put it on here. As long as there's some texture and some depth for it to adhere to, it's it just works. And then to clean up your mess, which is really not even a mess, just take a gooseneck uh, squirt bottle that you might have already from airbrushing, and you can literally wash away this, which also brings up my next point. After you're done working, you definitely want to matte coat your uh, miniatures because they, uh, they will dry and they dry a lot faster than contrast paint, but you can obviously smudge the stuff off and it's very easy to smudge off. And obviously if you make mistakes, you can smudge it right off. And in a lot of cases you can get right back to the, to the primer itself. Um, or wherever the last uh, spot you was that, uh, that you matte coated and um, just kind of start again. Like I said, this stuff adheres to itself very easily and it dries a lot quicker than contrast, which almost means like you don't have to batch paint. With contrast, you had to batch paint. With speed paint, you can literally paint a figure at a time, just switching between the colors on the figure and it's all good. Like you might, you might kind of over like get some paint on a different color and it's a lot easier to fix at that point. And I'll show you that here in a second. 
and then we'll slap some leather down, which is uh, one of my new favorite colors for them because there's so many pouches and there's so many packs uh, to use that this uh, this will really do a lot of uh, good work here. Is, did I do leather or did I do? I feel like I did not grab leather. That is not the leather color. So if you screw up, it's kind of funny. You can literally just dab it off in a lot of cases, like I said, and, uh, and just kind of start over. Watch this. I'll just take some water. And boom, we're good to go. And a matter of fact, that's probably going to be dry here in a second. Let me figure out what color I really wanted to use. Okay, I think I found it. So this is the leather. Is that it? That's it. Okay, so this is the leather color. Uh, I really like this one because obviously a lot of straps, a lot of packs, a lot of stuff going on uh, when it comes to things like Marvel Crisis Protocol, but also, you know, like Primary Space Marines and D&D &D figures and stuff always have that brown that you really want to pop with some leathery uh, color to it. And this is just the way to do it. So I applied it really thick. You don't have to worry about anything like that. It's just going to dry out. You just got to give it a few minutes. Um, but it, like I said, it dries shockingly fast, but you still don't want to bump the paint if you can help it. Then the camo green, which is also... I think gonna be a lot of people's favorites here. Now it isn't quite an orc green, but I think some people might use it as an orc green just for like some of the commandos and stuff. But I, I definitely like this color right here. It's, an, it's a nice poppy, um, not full on like a forest green, but it's, a, it's definitely a very cool color that I think we'll see a lot of use uh, in the future. And then my new favorite color out of all of them is definitely this red that is just, whoa, like, wow. This, and I'm about to show you one of the miniatures that I painted with this. Uh, I had to look at these colors that they sent me and I had to figure out which Marvel Crisis Protocol figure I could actually paint with fully with the colors they sent me. And I think you might appreciate my choice in miniatures because uh, it uh, it all just kind of lined up, if, uh, if you know what I mean. Now. Still got one open here. I wanted to show you what happens if you thin this down. Now, I do have uh, a bit of thinner that we've used before when I showed you how to actually make contrast paints because I suspected that it's just flow improver and some gloss medium, which I think it is because uh, you can pretty much make any paint a uh, contrast paint with this. But more importantly, you can use this to thin down anything a little bit better than the contrast thinner. So I'm assuming it's going to work good with this. I don't have any thinner for this, but with a little luck, this will work just fine. And then we're just going to show you what it looks like to thin this down, which doesn't, I mean, it's not bad, but it's probably not what you're going to want if you're going over a white base coat. Uh, if you're going over a different color base coat, like a black or something like that that I showed you with some of that what they call value highlighting or value painting earlier that's probably going to be more what you would want something like this for or going over uh, large flat areas this really is unnecessary you literally can take any one of these paints well any of the eight or so that I've gotten so far straight out of the pot onto miniatures and, and it literally looks this good in minutes so let's show you some actual painted stuff here, right? Uh, I thought, I was like, well, if you can thin it down, maybe you could put it on a vehicle and that would look dope, right? Because you can't really do that with contrast. So I tried and you know, for the most part, you can thin it down and you can smooth it out. If you've got these nice flat, flat panels like this, it works pretty well. But the problem is when you start getting up here to these areas, where there's a lot going on and not only is it flat, but there's also texture and that's where it gets a little weird and you have to kind of babysit it a lot and it's kind of not worth it. So then I was like, well, let's try it in the airbrush. And I loaded up the airbrush and well, it worked at first, full pressure, about 40 PSI, uh, but it it, it kind of it kind of streaked. Like it was a little, it was a little too much because it hit too quick and it didn't dry on on the, the surface and you can see it kind of pulled up so i was like all right let me throw it back we throw it back to about like 20 psi ish 
and did the top here and you can see that that turned out well it still wasn't quite still wasn't quite what i wanted because there's a little bit of pooling um and that was just kind of getting used to it but you can see where it gets into the cracks and crevices and it really makes this really you know if you didn't if you weren't looking at any of this it, that just seeing that right there is a really nice robust paint coat and if you appreciated it already instead of just white primer in it um, you'd see a lot more depth in the miniature but that's not what we did and then I came over here and I throttled the back a little bit more and it worked perfect out of the airbrush like it you can see the depth you can see the little nubs you can see all this stuff here it's a nice solid um, uh, base coat and then even these in the cracks that if you use the airbrush a lot you have a problem getting into areas like these like vents and cracks and respirator things and all those little super detail uh, oriented areas that stuff doesn't really get hit well so contrast is a great way to do that um, and get in those areas perhaps if you if you have a hard time like even this deck plating and stuff would probably look good with a little bit of contrast paint so it airbrushes well but you just have to kind of be on top of your game when it comes to that and not just go blast in full bore um, it works just fine and uh, you know obviously for Blood Angels player you're probably like holy crap so here's the first miniature I painted, a uh, Sylvanetha Revenant, and I used pretty much all the colors except for, I think, the purple that they gave me uh, on this. I mean, I didn't have an orc, but this would make a great orc beast snaga kind of color scheme for sure. This is the leather, this is the skin, you've got a camo color, which was great just over a white primer coat, right, white rattle can. Uh, this is a unique color, it's called something sand, sand golem. Uh, it's not quite a uh, yellow, but it still works pretty good. And then you can see some of the elements of blue, uh, the swirlies, and then of course uh, the power weapon there. This, it took like 15, 20 minutes to paint. I was watching football, uh, incredibly short paint scheme. And then I kind of hunkered down and painted something. Of course, I started out with the miniature looking like this with uh, you know a little bit of uh, dry brushing, a little bit of a kind of pre-highlighting, so to speak, on it, um, and, the, and the black wash on it, just to really get those highs and lows ready to get popped with whatever uh, paint I wanted to use. And here he is, Mr. Wade Wilson, Deadpool himself, completely painted with speed paint. Uh, the red, the black, we used a little bit of metal of the normal Army Painter metal right here, the plate metal metal. Um, we used that, just thinned down with a little bit of the Flow Improver um, and uh, Glaze Medium, but you could use the Army Painter, um, what is it, Flow the Army Painter War Paint mixing. It's basically the same thing. I just have a big bottle mixed up over here. Um, that stuff would work just fine too with a little bit of Flow Improver in it, and you can really smooth out a lot of the metals here to give it that uh, really cool kind of sheen and, and fade on it. But uh, but yeah, oh, and the leather color, of course, for all the straps. And down here at the bottom, a little bit of that sand, a little bit of the red, and there's like another color in here. Oh, I think it was the leather to kind of get that orange. And then this was pretty much already done, like you saw on the Wolverine color right there. But between those two miniatures, I was watching Monday Night Football. It was halftime. I was done. I don't have any other scale of reference for painting so fast that I don't even know what to say. If I had all these colors, I don't even know what I could paint. Um, between airbrushing and, and all my Marvel figures, and um, it might not be the best for metals, like an army like Custodes, but I already have a great way to paint those um, using actual army painter golds and bronzes already. So I guess I'm good there. I, I don't know what else I could paint, but this is a great application for these paints. Just make sure you hit it with matte coat afterwards. If you make any mistakes, you can literally lick your finger and probably erase it and go back over it and fix it. But I mean, two miniatures in about an hour and a half uh, together, uh, kind of crazy to be quite honest. Um, now, yeah, this was appreciated of course, but I appreciated a bunch of miniatures all at once. So I don't feel like that was a whole lot of time wasted or anything like that on, on this, appreciating it. Um, the one thing I do like about this speed paint that I really loathed about contrast is that it dries a lot quicker. So if you get, you know, like metal on the red or something like that, you can just give it a second to dry, hit it with a little white, give that a second to dry, come back with the speed paint, recoat it. It'll even coat over itself pretty quick if you want to give it a little bit more depth somewhere and you're good to go. So it's pretty crazy 
how like I don't know how to put into words how impressed I am with this because I've never seen or experienced anything like this before and hopefully if I don't have 80 Marvel figures painted up uh, after they send me the set in a reasonable amount of time though then uh, then there's just a uh, I have is literally no excuse for not getting that done. So that is it for this one. You guys and gals, thank you very much for watching our, I guess, debut and review of the new Army Painter Speed Paints. I think there's other things on the market like contrast, like speed paint, but, or in the same vein, but I don't think there's anything else on the market exactly like speed paint. And I think this is gonna be a game changer, I think pick up a bottle when you see it at stores or pick up the box set there's going to be a starter box set according to their video if i had to guess it's going to be super affordable try it out for yourself i think you're going to be very impressed with this product i think it stands to potentially be one of the best things that's ever happened to this hobby in recent memory um that i've ever been a part of for sure and you know to have these in my hands and actually get to try this stuff out for the last week or so and paint all the, all the things i've showed you already and really get accustomed to how these things work i think it's gonna be very well received out there so thank you once again for watching this video hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our other videos if you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here, as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep, whether you cancel or stay on. Just, it's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.